South Africa is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. If I remember correctly, we are the sixth most biodiverse country in the world and the fifth most infested with invasive species. There are over 1,400 invasive species in the country. Mammals like goats are included among this list. Seriously, goats? What are you doing, nature? This is lion country. Invasive species are not only a threat to the biodiversity of South Africa, but it also hurts the country's economy, costing South Africa a billion dollars a year. So let's talk about invasive species. Obviously, with over 1,400 invasive species, we can't talk about every single one of them. But there are some really annoying ones we should cover, and there are some interesting ones that don't make sense on the surface, like the goats. What the hell? Goats. So these guys have manes like lions, so that's kind of unique, but South Africa already has an animal for mountainous rocky terrain. The problem with these Himalayan wild goats are that they are naturally aggressive, and their stomachs are tough so they can eat basically any plants. So they'll outcompete the cliff springers as well as stress the natural environment. The way they got introduced to the natural habitat is a breeding pair is escaped from the Hrvatski Zoo in the 1930s and they've been present ever since. South Africa has a long history of combating invasive species, but so far they've only eradicated two. The next animal I want to talk about is the Indian miner, one of only three birds that made the list for the worst invasive species in the world. So the problem with the Indian miner is they drive away native birds from the areas they inhabit because they are territorial birds and they hang out in flocks and they are quite aggressive. In Australia, some municipalities actually give two-for-one vouchers when you buy native plants. The purpose of this is to create habitat for the smaller birds that are disturbed by the Indian miners. And this way communities can get involved with safeguarding the local birds by disrupting the miners when they nest in people's gardens and so on. If Indian miners are not native to your country, the best approach is to shoot on sight. They are more than just an invasive species, they are a pest and they get out of hand quite easily. In countries where the Indian miners are not native, they tend to avoid the native trees for nesting and prefer artificial structures. In South Africa, they escaped into the wild in 1902 and because their territorial instincts are so strong, they've been kicking out other birds from the nest and killing their young ever since. When it comes to aquatic species, there's quite a few invasive species in the country. A lot of fish have been introduced for sport fishing as well as for food fish. Think Atlantic salmon, largemouth bass, common bass, Nile tilapia, common carp, silver carp, smallmouth bass, grass carp. You get it. I guess you could say this really makes South Africa one of the best fishing destinations in the world. But maybe consult an expert before you decide to release something you caught. I'm guessing the biggest concern here is safeguarding the aquatic plants and any small fish that shelter in the aquatic plants or alongside the aquatic plants. Speaking of aquatic plants, we have problems with aquatic plants as well. Nearly a third of South Africa's total fresh water is lost to alien plants. The news in South Africa simply refers to these alien plants as the water thieves. Pine trees are believed to be the main culprit due to their presence in catchment areas, blocking any runoff from rainwater meant to collect in rivers, lakes and dams. South Africa is already a water scarce country. Between 2015 and 2019, Cape Nature spent 40 million rand clearing some of the trees in their province. But in all honesty, South Africa has got a long way to go.